This is the story of a warrior who shocked the world. It is a story of the power of the human spirit in the face of heartbreaking poverty, impossible odds, and insurmountable obstacles. It is the story of UFC lightweight world champion, Rafael Dos Anjos. Yeah, I grew up on the rough neighborhood. Uh, we was really poor at that time. And March Awards gave me everything I have. And all the opportunities, all my friends I have, is because of March Awards. I started March Awards at the age, I think, eight or nine. I, I had a place to training, but I was need to pay to training. I trained for six, seven months, and I didn't have money to pay anymore. Then I stopped to training for like three years. And then I come back at the age of 12, I found a free place to training. So since then, I never stopped. Before, when I, when I start fight, my dream was to fight on UFC, you know. And right now I'm UFC champion, so a lot of things change. And I, I think it's just the beginning. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and And I was a kid, I usually go to Blockbuster to rent Rickson Grace tape when he fought in Japan in 1994. He was using only Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he beat all those guys. He did three fights in one night. I usually rent those tapes. And one day the guy asked me if I want to buy the tape. I think I was the only guy who ran the tape and VHS. And then I bought the tape and I was watching every day. And one day I was at home watching with my friends. We was playing in the living room, fighting. And when my mom got home, she saw it and she took the tape, she break the tape. From the beginning, my parents, they don't like that much. And I don't let her know that I'm gonna fight, no. Just like after fight, I let her know. And my daddy, he was with me on my MMA debut. And it wasn't an easy fight for me, you know. I got a four day notice, five days notice. And at that time, I wasn't a professional, you know. I was 19 years old and I had to cut a lot of weight. And I, I didn't know how to do it. And then I just stopped eating. And it affects a lot of my performance. I won the fight, but they gave the fight for the other opponent. I hurt my nose, I got a black eye. And after that, my daddy, he don't like, he didn't like, but after a while, for sure, for example, now, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, I make a good living and he's happy for that. When I, the most most difficult part was when I when I fought Clay Gida right after I broke my jaw and I thought my career was gone. I thought I I can't, I can't fight anymore, but I came over it. You know, I put like some extra titanium plates on my jaw, and now it's feel, feeling really strong. And I'm very happy to to have a team behind me, a lot of people that believe in me. Sometimes have people that believe in me more than than I do, you know. And I'm really blessed to have that. So I have uh, I have two kids. The younger one is Rafinha, Rafael and the older one is Gustavo, and my wife, Christiane, and we live in California, United States. I love to be with them. I wake up early, take them to school, pick it up, you know, like around three or four o'clock. Normal life, you know, nothing special, and, but just the fact to be around them, it's, it's making me strong, you know, they, they are the reason that I'm fighting. For my kids, I want to give them as much as opportunity as I can. So my whole life, I didn't have so many opportunities. The only opportunity that I had was fighting, and I took it. 
and I want to give them, you know, a lot of options. Wherever they want to go, I will support them. I met Rafael as a fighter, so um, for me it's exciting to see and to watch him um, in the training. I try to support you as best as I can, as a woman uh, at home or at the gym, um, also with the kids, take care of the kids. Rafael, he's an awesome father, he's an incredible person. Um, I usually say he's my half. He's always helping my kids. He's always um, take care of me, uh, help me on my diet, on my exercise. Um, so sometimes he has um, time available for me too, like um, for hang out, dates. We, we always stay together and love leave each other. I started joining Evolve MMA six years ago. It was in 2009 when I first came here. And before I was a grappler, you know. I was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter. And it made a huge difference on my life, on my stand-up game. I started to see the, the stand-up game with the different eyes once I started training here. But the, the part that I, I most remember when I broke my jaw, my mind broke, my body broke, you know. No hope at all and I come to Evolve and I got a support for the team, you know, always believe in me, invest in me and like I said, even when you, you don't believe your dreams, you have someone to, that believe in more than you, you know, believe in more in you than yourself. It's happening here with me, Evolve helped me a lot and I couldn't, I couldn't reach my goals without it. I have a, a, a lot of people to thank, you know, it's hard to say everybody, but I have to thank my coach, my friends, you know, everything that helped me to get here, you know. Big thanks to my team Evolve, you know, that's always believed in me. Many times in my, my life I didn't believe in myself, you know, and I just want to thank my, my team Evolve, my, all my teammates, everybody that rode with me one time had part on it, you know, I have to thank them. Uh, we started training together in Rio de Janeiro like uh, 10 years ago and the same time I moved to Rio de Janeiro he also moved to Rio de Janeiro so we tried, we started training at the same same place at Gordos Academy and also we, we shared the, the, the house he was my my roommate me Rafael and Braga used to live on the, the ghetto in Rio de Janeiro I remember he always trained very hard back then like we are, we are only like grapplers so we didn't know any strike so I remember like he always go to the boxing gym and try to learn boxing and get better and better in his uh, MMA game. In 2009 Rafael came to Singapore for the first time to learn Muay Thai because here uh, Evolve MMA Singapore we have the, the best Muay Thai coach in the world. He loved the training here so much, so after that he, he joined the Evolve Fight Team. Every year Rafael tried to come here to Singapore to, to improve his strike, training with uh, MMA with us to improve his game. I'm very happy to see Rafael right now is the, the UFC champion. He's an inspiration for everyone like uh, here at Evolve Fight Team. He's a great example for us. Yeah, man, I think uh, you have to, to love what you do. You have to always put God first, you know, because sometimes what, what we want is not what God wants, you know. We have to listen to Him and work hard, love what you do, and commitment. have to have commitment. Yeah, I just want to say to my fans that thank you for all support through this, those years, you know. It's been hard, long years. 
and like I said, it's just the beginning. So everything gonna start now. I'm gonna defend this belt, and I hope keep this belt for a long time. The story of Rafael dos Anjos teaches us that the most beautiful people in the world are not those with a perfect life. No, the most beautiful people in the world are those who have shed tears for their dreams, who have tasted the bitterness of failure, who have known the solitude of suffering. And yet, they march forward unchanged, undeterred, and unwavering in their quest to rise above circumstances, odds, and despair. The most beautiful people in the world are those who have scars indelibly etched on their souls because they chose to live their dreams.